Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Rachel and today I want to share with you how we're using up all of the yummy food that's coming from our backyard garden. Having a garden is super beneficial and a lot of fun, but you have to be able to put your produce up or you may just lose all your hard work and all the dirt. Didn't realize there'd be so much dirt, but here I am showing the way that I have um, hung my peppers up to dry right next to my stove and this is a super handy way to have them accessible so that when I'm cooking I can just reach up and snatch a chili pepper if needed and to get started I am making some salsa and I got my little uh, chopper out of the drawer and this makes it super easy just to get all of those onions and peppers and tomatoes all chopped up so that I'm not having to touch them too much because they are hot and they get hot on your skin and then you know you touch other things and you may have a burn <laughs> but anyway we don't want that to happen I started off with three habaneros and then now I am just loading my uh, veggie chopper up with jalapenos and this will be a really spicy salsa which is okay in our house because um, some of us like really hot food not me but <laughs> my husband does and so because we have so many hot peppers to use up I am just going to make a um, salsa so no problems here at our household with all of these peppers to use and I did hang some to dry as you saw and then I also just took some of my um, Hungarian wax peppers and just put them in my freezer whole and that's only because we have so many coming in that it's getting to the point where it's a little hard to keep up with them so we're just gonna put some away for later on in the year and they will be just fine in my freezer whole and I can grab them during the winter, use them in soups and other recipes. So next I'm just getting some of our tomatoes chopped up and I um, did not plant Roma tomatoes this year and those would be a really good for salsa. Um, but I just found the firmest tomatoes that we had in our bunch of tomatoes that needed to be processed and I'm using those for the salsa and then at the end of the video I am making spaghetti sauce with the softer tomatoes so there is a method to my madness here. It would have been great if I had one of the grandkids around to do the chopping for me because they really seem to enjoy that activity. So in my large bowl, I am just adding my tomatoes to my onions and pepper mixture. And I'm gonna give that a stir and get them all mixed up together. And this is only going to make one quart size jar of salsa, which is perfect because I'm not canning it. I'm just putting it in the fridge to use for now. So. Who knows, I do have tons of peppers and tomatoes that are still coming in the garden. We have lots of green tomatoes and um, some that are turning red. And I'm just using the store-bought packet and it says just add tomatoes and onion. This is a hot salsa. I mean, like I said, we like it hot and why not make it hotter, right? <laughs> so anyway. I'm just adding that packet to this bowl of tomato and pepper and onion and this smelled so good right out of the package just like that and um, I could have left it like this I thought maybe I would but I did use the largest setting on my chopper I could have gone smaller and used the um, smaller um, blades but I didn't think of it and it's too late now so I will just mix this all together and then come in and give it a little blend with my hand mixer and um, get some of those juices going in the salsa and then just pour it in a jar and keep it in the fridge so all I'm doing is giving a light blend. I don't want to liquefy it or anything like that. I just want to get some of those big chunky pieces broken down and then get a little bit of um, liquid going from those tomatoes. 
And it was this point right here where the fumes from those peppers overcame me and I went into a coughing fit. Um, note to self, next time wear a mask and be prepared for um, the smell of the peppers to be so strong and overtake my breathing capacity. Now I know. And here is our finished jar of salsa and it was so delicious. Next, I have these two pie pumpkins that I'm going to just cut open and take out the seeds. And we're just going to pop these in the oven on 375 for an hour and get them baked up and softened up. So I am just using a big knife, but this would be a great use for those jack-o'-lantern kits that I have stored somewhere but just didn't take the time to go look for them so we're just going to use a metal spoon and a big old knife and just cut the top off of these pumpkins and then work on getting them de-seeded and all of the stringy stuff that's inside just like when you carve your jack-o'-lanterns at Halloween so these are pie pumpkins or sugar pumpkins I guess is what they're called as well and I'm just going to cut them in half and then work on getting them um, cleaned out. One thing I did not think about when I began this project and you'll see me kind of realize what I did when I after I get started is I didn't think about saving the seeds and getting those dried out. And so at some point I realized that I threw a bunch of those delicious pumpkin seeds straight into the trash. And then I catch myself and begin to separate them and um then I'm just gonna put them in the oven when I put the pumpkins in as well and get them dried out a little. I will save the um, pumpkin seeds in a clean, dry jar and use them later on. I will just get them back out when I'm feeling more um, festive and fall-like and just do um, like a pumpkin uh, seed snack for like a movie night or something. So that is just a fun activity that I like to do in the fall is toast pumpkin seeds. But let's be real, this is still August and um, it's still hot. So I am turning on my oven on this day, which is something I normally would not do when it's still um, in the 80s, you know, but I am on this day just because these pumpkins need to get used up and I know there's probably a different way to do it but this was the easiest and quickest way that I saw when I researched it was just to pop them in the oven for about an hour until they're softened and then just kind of scoop out the pumpkin filling so anyway that's what I'm doing but I was not really in that fall uh, spirit where I wanted to toast these pumpkin seeds so basically all I'm going to do is on this day was wash them up and then dry them out in the oven as my pumpkin is baking and then I'm going to let them totally air dry so there's no moisture I don't want them to go bad and I'll just put them in a clean um container and then when I feel like I want to season them up then I will just use a little bit of like chili powder and garlic and butter and toast them in my air fryer and they'll be good. So here I am just going to speed it up for you because this is a little bit tedious getting all of those seeds harvested out of these pumpkins and getting the inside scooped out and using a metal spoon is really like a good idea to me because it just you know it cuts through all of the slimy little icky stuff that's inside the pumpkins this was never like one of my favorite things to do as a kid and, or as an adult so when my kids were little we had some in the family that really enjoyed cleaning out the pumpkins and some that only enjoyed carving and I would be you know that kid that only enjoyed the carving part but anyway um 
I have no kids around to do this for me. And nowadays they probably wouldn't want to anyway, because I don't know. <laughs> There's only like one or two in the family that enjoyed doing that part. So I'm on my own getting these pumpkin guts out of the pumpkin. And you want to make sure that you get them all out. Um, funny story, when I was a young teenager, I decided to bake a pie, only I didn't have a recipe for a pumpkin pie, so I used the stringy part and not the fleshy part of the pumpkin, and so it turned out beautiful, but when um, my stepmother cut into the pumpkin and uh, the little stringy stuff came oozing out of it, she was pretty upset and thought I was trying to prank her. So here we are, our pumpkins are ready, and I'm just spraying down my large baking sheet with some nonstick spray. And I'm just going to lay each uh, pumpkin half face down. Oh, by the way, I don't know if I mentioned this, but you want to clean your pumpkin off um, really good before you start this whole thing. Obviously, these pumpkins were really dirty and I did give them a nice little bath before we got started, but I didn't show that part. And so I'm just putting them face down and I'm going to put the seeds on that pan as well and bake them in the oven for an hour and 375. And this is what they look like when they're all done and that hour is up. And so... I wasn't sure if I needed to start um, scooping or peeling them while they were still piping hot or if I should let them cool, but I went in with them piping hot because I wasn't sure if how, you know, like the baked potato, if you peel the skin off of it while it's super hot it comes off really easy but then as it cools it kind of sticks back on and it's hard to get off I didn't want to have to deal with that so I just went in while it was hot and I was just kind of like moving things around and you know so I didn't burn myself and once I got all of that pumpkin filling out of each piece I just put it in a bowl and added enough water so that it pureed really nicely now pureeing food is just something that I'm really good at because of my past work experience in an AFC home. So I knew that um, how much water kind of instinctually to add to get the right consistency. And here I am just adding um, that pumpkin puree to a measuring cup because I want about two cups per each freezer bag. And so I usually start off very generous when I start a project and go a little bit over that two cup mark. And here I'm just taking a little bit out because I don't want to have a bag at the end that doesn't have enough in it. And somehow this um, amount of pumpkin turned out perfectly to have three bags with two cups in each bag. That couldn't have turned out better if I had planned it that way. Open up the window I'm breathing in the last of September I can feel the wind blow And the late summer sky is like a giant ember each bag of the pumpkin puree freezer ready I just laid it flat on my countertop and squeezed all of the air out of it and then just stacked them up and laid them flat so that they will go into my freezer and store nicely. <music> And 
and that's all there is to that. I have more pumpkins coming out of the garden soon, but we have some puree going in the freezer for pies or muffins or breads come fall and winter. Next, I'm finishing up with those softer tomatoes by getting them cleaned up and chopped up into um, kind of like wedge um, sizes. And I'm just going to put them into a large saucepan and get them um, ready to be cooked up on my stovetop. And all I'm doing is just kind of chopping them here on my sideboard. I did this on purpose because they are super juicy. And this way I can just kind of slide all of that mess right into my sink and clean up will be nice and easy. Um, I'm just cutting off any bad piece and discarding that. We do have um, some ugly ones coming out of the garden and you know I think there's like this misconception that all of our food comes beautifully from the grocery store but you know even like this soft and kind of pitted looking tomato is going to cook down really nicely into the spaghetti sauce that I'm making today and um, we're not going to waste it because it's not um, beautiful so anyway i'm just going to get these tomatoes all chopped up and then clean up my mess and then get them on the stove top cooking and i am just adding some water to that i think i probably put about a cup and a half of water for this amount of tomatoes and then i have two bulbs of garlic yeah i said whole bulbs of garlic that i am just going to get ready to go into the pot along with those tomatoes and i didn't um, crush them, slice them, or do anything to them because they are just going to cook up and get soft right along with these tomatoes and then everything will get blended. And so I have some fresh basil from my herb garden. No, I'm just lying. I only have one basil plant in my house <laughs> and the thing has died and been resurrected several times. So today's its day to shine and be used for something meaningful. I added a bunch of Italian seasoning because I really wanted a lot of seasoning in the spaghetti sauce. So we have lots of garlic, lots of basil, and lots of Italian seasoning going on here along with all of these delicious tomatoes. And so I'm adding some onion powder because I did not add any fresh onion. I figured that I usually add onion or bell pepper to my meat when I'm cooking it for spaghetti sauce. So that could always be added later. And so here the um, garlic and tomatoes are softened up and they are ready for blending. And I'm just using my hand blender again. And this day was so therapeutic to me. So I kind of feel like everybody has their own version of self-care. And days like this that I can spend in my kitchen are my way of doing um, some type of self-care routine. It's kind of like therapy for me. So anyway, this was a really nice way to recharge and regenerate all of these um, delicious smells in my kitchen, the herbs, the spices, pumpkin, the tomato sauces, just a really fun way to spend the day for me. It's kind of something that I just enjoy. It's very peaceful. I added a couple tablespoons of brown sugar as well, just to give it that sweet spaghetti sauce taste that we like. And so here is how it's looking so far. And yes, it does have kind of a pinkish color from all the foaminess, but that will settle down as it sits. I just um, used that blender. And so that's what's causing that pink look, but it does go away. And don't forget to add salt and pepper because you got to have it just for good flavorful food, right? And you know, I like me some black pepper, so I go a little heavy on that part. I'm just going to stir that all in. I have my heat turned down and then this is what it all looks like. I just want to show you those bits of garlic and all of the seasoning that's in the sauce. It smelled so good. So just to show you how we used it up, we cooked up some meat and then we just added our sauce right in. And I did have some um, random tomatoes that 
Um, I wanted to use up still and a couple of cucumbers. So I'm just slicing them to go into a salad. Um, all the smells got my husband really interested in spaghetti. So we ended up having spaghetti on that day and we had a nice garden salad to go alongside of it. Bill said he never wants to eat store-bought spaghetti sauce again. And that's all I have for this video. Thank you so much for coming by my channel and spending some time in the kitchen with me while I use up all of these foods from our garden. If you enjoyed it, I would love it if you hit the subscribe the button window. so that you can spend more time with me and see future videos. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one. Bye. I can feel the wind blow And the late summer sky is light